So the title of the exhibition is Beauties and Beasts, figurative work by Roshana Hatton and Maureen O'Keefe. And the Beauties and Beasts title comes from the fact that Shauna has these very beautiful, perfect seeming, very nice colors in her paintings and she's celebrating the beauty of women. And then mine are the beasts <laughs> because they are that, you know, they start out flawed and, but underneath or even on the surface, there's something special to be found, so. And then also we felt like we were in Beauty and the Beast when we were in France because of the location, so it all fit together and made sense. So I first found out about the Chateau Orcavo residency on Instagram, so I have done a lot of research and finding of galleries and connections through Instagram, which is not something I ever expected to do, but I did. And I found the Chateau because a woman who had been one of my graduate assistants in one of my classes, she went on it in like the first or second iteration of artists that came. And I'm always trying to look for opportunities that uh, people who I respect have also done, I guess. Um, so I applied and got in, got accepted, and my goal for going there was just to, I had just finished a large body of large scale paintings, really big four foot by four foot pieces. And I was kind of stuck and didn't know what to do next. So the residency for me was just a time to allow myself to explore and think about my work and where I wanted to go next with it. So I studied painting at the Savannah College of Art and Design. So my background there is directly in painting. I was trained in oil painting, but when I got married and started having kids, I, I wanted as few toxins around as possible. So I ditched the oil painting because um, you have to work with turpentine and things. So I switched over to acrylic painting and I moved home to Ohio here. I met my husband in Georgia. We moved to Ohio. I got a job teaching drawing and painting at Edison Community College. So I've been there since 2009 and making my own work. So I have a studio up in Piqua, which is where the college is. I've been working on this sort of style that I do, which is called blind contour drawing for about eight or nine years. I think I started it in 14 or 15. And it was a result of, I was doing a very photorealistic drawing. So I would just copy a photograph portrait of someone and that became sort of tedious. I, I, it just wasn't allowing me to explore things that I wanted to explore. So I started experimenting in my sketchbook with this type of drawing that is a warm up that we do in basic drawing classes. And it's just an eye-hand coordination thing. We don't look at the paper, we just look at our subject. So if I'm doing a portrait, I look at the person, but not the paper, and I do it all in one line. And it distorts the image, but for me that allows so much more to come through in terms of concept or content. Well, I had been working on the blind contours for since about 2015. And I had just finished up a series of sort of mirrored portraits where there was a portrait of a person and then a flipped upside down version of the same person. Um, and they were really big, it had taken a long time. And I was ready for not a new style, this is the same style, but I work in my series, conceptual series. That one had to do with the seven sacraments of Catholicism. <laughs> and people who maybe embodied some of those things. And this is a whole different idea. Um, it's kind of delving into what makes a good painting, what do we value, what is a flaw, and how do you bring beauty out of something that has flaws. So the work that is here, I have referenced people that were at the Chateau with me. So like this gentleman here in the works, the four works behind me, or five? Five. <laughs> he, his name's Kue, he's another painter. He was at the Chateau with us. And I took a lot of reference photos of the people that were there with me because um, at home, I, I really only like to do portraits of people that I know. I don't like to take, you know, celeb 
pictures off the internet or whatever, I like to either work from life or from photos that I've taken of people I know. So it was important to have that direct reference and so the Chateau was a great opportunity to meet a lot of artists, talk to them about their artistic experiences and then um, use them in the works. So the work that's here right now actually is a display of my whole process. So you'll see these pencil drawings that are more realistic. So those are the original study. And then you'll see some blind contour drawings that are just in pen. And then you'll see finished paintings that are taken and scaled up and color added. And I just love the way they look almost like stained glass. And it's endlessly interesting, the process for me. So I wanted to show that whole process because I usually have not um, in the past. So I want them to think about what for me, what I see when I look at them is how, I keep using the word flawed. I don't consider them flawed, but the process puts a lot, adds a lot of flaws from the beginning. And I want people to think about bringing beauty back, you know, even with raw materials that are not perfect. It was my first time outside of the country. So I loved all of it. France is an amazing place with, just filled with art and decoration in a way that we don't have here, that we don't see. Just every surface, there was attention paid to it, and it was beautiful. It, it made you feel joy just to walk down the street, uh, so I loved that. Another really wonderful thing that came out of it was the, the language barrier. It was intriguing and sort of like made my brain fire on different cylinders to try to figure out how to communicate with people when there was a language barrier. So I loved that aspect of it. And I actually got to talk to the other artists about my work and kind of have their input on my work, which made me think about my own things in different ways that I hadn't before. So that was all valuable. So I have a website, which is www.maureenokeefeart.com. And then my Instagram is at Maureen OK. So I'd like to continue this series uh, from Orkavo because I have lots of reference from all the other artists. And then I also have been working on a series of nude or nearly nude paintings of figures that will be going to another show at Wild Goose Creative in Columbus in January. I love Shauna. I've been here before for other shows and it's a beautiful space. So I feel very honored to be invited and be able to show with her. I like that people who are coming to see it will get to see these two very distinct styles, two very distinct takes on the figure, but with some similar themes happening. Um, I think people who enjoy art will get something out of that, out of the viewing of that. And so I feel like it's an honor. Well, in January, I was um, fortunate to be able to go to a residency uh, in Orcavo, France, um, with Maureen O'Keefe. And but the idea for this, for my work out of the show, started over 30 years ago when I studied in Italy. I wanted to get back to doing figures again, especially of women. I wanted to explore the female figure in an abstract form, but in thinking about classical sculpture and classical artwork, the you know, even if you think about the Greeks and the Romans, the, the female form was revered, and I think that is, a lot of that has been lost in today's world. So I'm exploring women breaking free, but also I, I just think the female females are so beautiful and multifaceted. They have many different roles, and I want to revisit those through my artwork. The way I got to go on this residency was I'd been watching it for four or five years and thought, oh, wow, what is this magical place? One day last summer, I thought, I'm just gonna apply, why not? And I really didn't think that, I thought, well, this is never gonna come to fruition, but just the fact that I was accepted was a wonderful honor. And I had a lot of good friends and family members who were like, you have to go. <laughs> It is a two-week concentrated program, self-directed, and where people, artists, writers, musicians come. They can either explore something, an idea or a medium that they've been wanting to explore. They can work on a body of work that they have always wanted to do, which is what I was interested in doing. And it's two weeks in the 18th century French Chateau, 
and you have a, you know, there's somebody cooking and cleaning for you and amazing French food. You don't have to worry about any of that. You're just escaping out of life. It's actually an absolutely beautiful place. So inspiring to be around, you know, in the environment. And then being with fellow creatives too, bouncing off ideas. And it was so fun being with Maureen. Our studios were right next to each other and plus we shared an apartment and that was fabulous. And then we spent a week afterwards in Paris exploring the museums and the city. So what I have on display here, and behind me I have a winged warrior and she was inspired by Nike of Samothrace, which if, it's a very famous Greek sculpture in the Louvre when you go in the entrance of the Louvre. And that inspired me 30 years ago and I, now I see her as a combination of David, a warrior, a female warrior, and a goddess like Nike. Nike of Samothrace. And then I have a series of other pieces that are like Michelangelo's slaves breaking out of marble, but it's women breaking out of the canvas, breaking free from what binds them, patriarchal ideas um, and such. Then I have some smaller studies of those pieces. I have another angel piece as well. And the smaller studies, they, they represent different roles too. Like there's a maternal figure and, and another warrior and then a French lady. And again, I wanted to capture different aspects of, of women because we all were multifaceted beings, beautiful beings. So my hopes is for people to, when they see my work, I want them to see either something of themselves or something or someone that they know. Um, and to move them in some way. And that's been the goal in most of my artwork. You can find more of my artwork at my uh, studio and gallery on Main Street in Springboro, Chasing Light Art Studio and Gallery. I've been there for three years. I teach classes and do my own artwork. And then I have about 20 local artists in there as well. You can find me on social media, Shauna Hatton Art or Chasing Light Art Studio. Go to Chasing Light Art Studio on Facebook and Instagram. This experience was such a blessing and it just reminded me of who I am at the core and that to follow those little, you know, those little nudges on what I want to create next because it comes from a deeper place. It's not, you know, for somebody. I do a lot of commission pieces, which I love to do. And of course there's market too to consider, but this is just something that is near and dear to my heart. It also reminded me of how important it Creatives need other creatives. And that energy we share in ideas, an exchange of ideas is invaluable. I am still continuing this series. I want to build more. I've got quite a few that I did not get done for this and I just let that go. But I just, I, it's not, I'm not through this series yet. We met at the Dayton Art Institute. We were both working there, Shauna in the education department and I was managing inventory at the gift shop. So we met there like and six years ago. It was a while ago. Yeah. And both of us had been watching the Instagram page of the Chateau Orcavo for a while. And we both first of all though, we were we we were we were both like moms we're both and artists. Moms and, and artists. And we just connected right like, right and Yeah, we've had a, a good a connection. Yeah. Since the very beginning. Yeah. Yeah. Like she would sneak into my office <laughs> at work. Yeah. And <laughs> we probably spend too much time chatting. <laughs> but uh, so that was that. And then we both got accepted into the Chateau at the same time. Prior to that, we were both in a fellowship together yes, also. Yes, 2018, um, Dayton I, Visual Arts Center. Yeah. The now the contemporary. Correct, yeah. and uh, then we both ended up going to to France together, which yeah, was so and laughed our way through France. Yeah. <laughs> so there was an application. You send in yeah. samples of your work. You send in a proposal, basically, uh, or like a cover letter talking about what you'd like to do while you were there and kind of the things that you're concerned with. And they just go through everyone's. Um, application and make choices. They told us the number while we were there. I don't, do you remember? Like how many applications versus like how many people were there? less than 10%. Okay. Other applicants get in. And yeah. we happened to get in at the same time and know each other, so mm -hmm. wonderful. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the month though was up to, up in the air a little bit, wasn't a, it? A little bit, yes. Yeah. So yeah. we did get to. Only a crazy, Artists. Well, actually, it's actually really good. We went in January, 
We went in January because my studio is, that's the slower time, is January. Um, if I could go again, I would go when the weather is warm, but mm. I'm glad we didn't because I wouldn't have gotten as much work done as I got done. I mean, the weather, winter there beats winter in Ohio any day, but. It, yeah, uh, it would have been the playtime had it been play time. spring or summer. We still managed to have some playtime. Yes, there was a lot of playtime. <laughs> but we got a lot of work done. We got a we lot of work done. serious and, and studious. You think what happens when you don't have to cook and Clean grocery shop and, and take yes, care of other beans. For sure. <laughs> we woke up about the same time, mm -hmm. made some coffee in the French press. Yeah, we which had was our, new to me, but not to you. We had our own little apartment in the village, mm -hmm. which was actually really cool. At first, I wasn't sure how that was going to be because some of the um, residences were in the um, chateau, chateau but our studio was up on the third floor. And then we, um, yeah, we woke yeah, up we, same time. we got the same, or we got put together in that little house in the village, which was super cute. Super and so cute. We worked during the day at the chateau with everyone else. We ate our meals at the chateau, everything happened there. And then in the evening when we were tired and ready ready to call it quits, we could just walk back through the little village across the creek. So um, we would end up going there, maybe it was like nine in the morning or so. Yeah. And sometimes we wouldn't come home till one o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which was a little bit creepy. Sometimes, because um, it's so dark. The, the, it's incredibly dark. There's no, there aren't any street lights on past mm -mm. like nine o'clock. And uh, were there, there even were, any street lights? There were a couple, well, they were like house lights. Oh, yes. You know, like motion in sensors village. in the village. Yeah. The long driveway up to the chateau, though. Mm -hmm. that no, was none on the none. way up to the chateau. So we had our phones. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and there, were, there was one night we heard a coyote or. What was it? Something. Fox? I don't know. It was ungodly, the sound. <laughs> we both we hightailed. hightailed it. <laughs> <laughs> it's very self-directed. So different residencies work in different ways, but this one in particular is self-directed. You go and you either have a particular project that you're working on for yourself, or uh, you can be in an experimental phase and it's a good chance to focus on yourself and kind of redirect yourself, which was my kind of outlook on it. But they would have evening things, you know, history night with Ziggy and literary the business night. of art and a literary night where the um, writers could share what they're working on. And there was the artist journey night where we all got together and shared our own experiences in the art world with each other, which a lot came from those evenings of community because because these people were from all over the world yes yeah. australians and americans and mm -hmm. canadian now on ours that was it it was australian yeah. american and canadian but the, and well there were there any europeans i can't remember no Ma no. no matthew was canadian but he yeah lived in france yeah but at the other residency classes there have been people from all over the world mm -hmm. you know all different places I think for me, I'm, I'm typically very shy and you were kind of my in to make some connections with other artists that I would not, I don't think I would have been so outgoing had I not had like a little buffer, you know, like a, a crutch. <laughs> I think there was a lot of value in the fact that we have known each other, been friends for so long and, and we've you know, Maureen lives up in Sydney, but sometimes, you know, through the years when we haven't been able to get together, we've called each other mm -hmm. about different things we're working on or things we're working through, and we're part of an art mastermind group now. And just that, you know, that, but having that history of our, you know, our, our, our work and um, trusting each other to give each other, you know, the valuable right feedback, feedback, the right kind of feedback. Yeah and an openness, I think when it was the two of us, a little bit more openness to be honest about our feedback than you would be with like the strangers who you're also trying to kind of befriend and you're living with for the next two weeks. Yes. We can say, oh, that's mm, no, Shauna. Or you can be <laughs> like, no, that's not going to work. You need to just move on. <laughs> or it's like, wow, I hadn't thought about that. Yeah. And yeah, mm -hmm. it was really good. And we just make each other laugh. Yeah. <laughs> So it was comforting. It was very comfortable yeah. to have.
Yeah, there. and especially traveling. Yes. Oh my gosh. Because neither of us know. Footprint. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that it was nice to have another figure painter there because between the two of us, we sort of pushed for this figure drawing night where everyone got together in the largest studio, which was a, a woman named Becca's studio, and had all of us take turns modeling for each other. and With clothes on. With clothes like, on. You don't have to, like, you just need somebody to sit there and just kind of be still. <laughs> because, like, for me, drawing from observation is yes. very, very important, as opposed to drawing from memory or imagination. So <laughs> yeah, having those models there was so incredible. And it was and so fun because artists don't want to model, they want to draw, right? right? So we did a spin the bottle, we won't say what kind of bottle, but a spin the bottle for who was going to be next. And we right. just, it was great fun. And with the two of us sort of rallying yeah. everyone, it really Weren't we worked. kind of the moms of the group though? I think we were. Yeah. We were definitely on <laughs> We weren't the, the oldest. End. No, but we were, we were in the older demographic. It was like 50-50 probably. You think? Yeah. Okay. But yeah. But we were, we were somewhere side. in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> we were we were the youngest at heart though. Yeah, I think so. <laughs>